Do the Daily. It's the final installment. We're going to talk about parts four and five. That's right. Today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. You've reached the WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. And now your hosts, Jan O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, welcome everyone to the WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where we line, connect, and prosper. This is episode 286. You can find all those show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Yeah, Jam, we've been through the first couple uh, parts of this. We talked about the morning routine. We talked about uh, lead follow-up. We talked about lead generation. We are going to dive into those last two parts of the daily right now, and then you'll be uh, informed and be able to run out and do the daily daily, because that's the way it works, right, Jam? Yes, absolutely. And just to kind of recap, the whole idea, before we dive into steps four and five, which are pretty straightforward, it's as, as Matt has entitled this today from contract to close, because that's the part. It's going to be working with active clients and then all the admin and follow-up that you have to do. But let's just put it in all perspective of the five. The whole idea here is just to have a simple formula that if you can put these five elements into your day in some fashion, then this is what consistency doing this, every, you know, at least five days a week, you'll have a consistent business. And so Starting just to recap, starting with the morning routine, meaning you start your day taking care of yourself, then lead gen, generate new business, do something every day that's generating some business and then follow up leads that you have that are not ready to buy right now or sell right now, which brings us to number four, which is active clients. Now, I didn't on purpose, I did not make four active clients number one. I know everybody's going, well, gosh, you know, the whole goal is to have an active client today. But let me ask you. If you look at all of your last 30 days, 60, 90 days, how many days out of a 30-day period did you actually have an active client? Now, some of you might be super busy and you have an active client every day. And if that's the case, then you probably are going to have people helping you with some of the other steps, like maybe even lead follow-up and number five, which is all the admin and escrow. Okay, good for you, you know, go for it because lead generation and active clients would be a great model if that's all you're doing all day, right? So you're still getting all five of the elements in is what I'm trying to say. So for most agents that are closing anywhere from whatever, eight to 20 transactions per year, or maybe even a little more, you may not have anybody that's helping you with it. Or maybe you work as a team as I do. We have a virtual assistant that helps us with some social media posting, but we're handling all the admin and we're not to a point yet where we're ready to have a transaction coordinator. So you'll decide when that's all necessary. So if it's you doing it all, active clients is number four, simply because one, two, and three need to be a priority every day. So Active clients means on days that you have are actively working with a buyer or a seller, speaking to real estate agents, you know, you have a client today and that means you're with them face to face or maybe even if you're on a Zoom with them, you're having conversations, you're showing property, you're going out on listing appointments. I would even put into active clients writing of the contracts. That's not admin. That's all putting a deal together. That's right. Because five picks up once you're in escrow. Okay. So, That'd be awesome if you could do that five days a week, then you're going to have to find time for the other things. Uh, The only way you would be doing it five days a week is you have an amazing lead generation machine and then somebody helping you follow up, right? So all makes sense. So active clients become priority on days that you have them. But here's the caveat. You must find a way to not have day after day go by where you're not having uh, the other thing. You know, you should all, everybody, we're all going to start with number one, taking care of ourselves. But lead generation and lead follow up can fall off when you're busy with active clients. And I just want to remind you, you've got to find a way to fit it in. So the best way to do that is you look at your week. We have a client on Tuesday and a client on Friday. Then maybe we need to load up on lead generation and follow up on the days because we know on the days that we don't have clients. And when you do have clients, maybe you can do a little of that. But don't go for weeks without generating any new business and following up with your leads because this is how your business goes up. It's awesome. And then you're down because you haven't been putting anybody in your pipeline and following up. And now you go another 30 days without any business. So the only way to make this happen is you've got to be, this is why it's just this, you know, you have to be consistent with it. You have to continue on one through five 
every day. It just might mean you wait it out, which how much are you doing? If I don't have an active client today, then I'm going to put a lot of time and effort into lead generation and lead follow up and yeah. escrows. Roller coasters are fun to be on if you're going to an amusement park, but it is not a fun way to work or operate your business. So get off, get off the roller coaster, people, and just get a nice little continuous, consistent business, right? You can't do that without lead right. generation and lead follow up. And you, and it goes without saying that you won't have active clients if you're not doing the lead gen, right. new, attracting new business, you know. And then, and, and when we talked about attracting new business, that just to reiterate, go back and watch that episode. It's all, it's your sphere of influence, what you're doing to stay in touch with them, which is also following up. But it's what are those lead pillars? What are you doing on a consistent basis every day? That is your system that generates people right. into your pipeline, so you can sort through and find active clients, and then follow put the rest in a follow-up program so that you're consistently having active clients throughout the weeks and months, right? That's the whole goal there. Yep. So active clients is number four. The priority uh, is, you know, an active client today, obviously, so you can turn it into a transaction and help someone. So balance that out so that you don't get into that, um, you know, you get so busy because the next step, number five, is where I feel a lot of people, it becomes a time suck, a lot of us, me included, I've fallen into the trap of number five, which I call admin and escrow. So everything that has to do with administration of your real estate business is in number five. It's in escrows we'll get to in a second because we'll talk about some keys to make it streamlined. But everything else is an admin. If it's not in one, two, three and working with an active client. Yeah. Admin is everything from going to training, working on your CE, attending meetings, you know, doing any, getting ready for clients, uh, doing homework and research, doing your social media, all the other tasks that are behind the scenes that run your business. And if you don't have an assistant, I mean, this could be 25% of your business time yeah. easily more if you're busy that you have to fit into your schedule if you don't have somebody helping you. So a couple ideas there is Look at getting a virtual assistant or hiring a transaction coordinator. If you're having consistently, I used to tell people, if you're closing consistently four transactions a month, you probably need a TC because right. that would free up so much time. If you're managing four transactions, there's just so much paperwork. There's so much, everything that takes longer than five minutes. Well, I need to go ahead and get this piece of paper done and prepped and over to the other agent and have a phone call and talk to my clients. You know, a licensed assistant could help you with that or a transaction coordinator that could handle all those could take maybe free up 25% of your time to then go put it towards lead generation and lead follow-up and time to work with another client, right? Mm -hmm. So just something to consider because I think a lot of us will fall into the trap of, I've got so many tasks to do and your whole day could be in number five and then you didn't do any lead gen, you didn't do any lead follow-up and you didn't have an active client. I'm not saying that you might have a day or every once in a while in your month where you're like, I really got to get caught up and you do it, but that can't be what you're doing every day is what I'm trying to say, right? So admin uh, is everything else. Escrows are managing everything from a to z right so you got a contract now you open up escrow and the best way to make sure you don't drop the ball here if you don't have a transaction coordinator helping you is to make sure you have a, a really amazing a to z checklist all right and that's what we use and we put it on drive and what we created was every detail from what we do to open an escrow to all the automatic emails that we send out we use gmail templates every step of the way, how we need to check in with our client and stay on top of it for a buyer and a seller. And then we just list the tasks down one side of the spreadsheet and then put the closings across the top. And then when we have our Zoom meetings, we'll just go down that list and make sure we haven't missed anything. Because if you keep it all up in your head, you're going to miss something, especially if you have you multiple transactions you're trying to manage. And the details is, is where you can get yourself in trouble because you're like, oh, I forgot to send the information to them about changing out their utilities, you know, and so don't rely on your brain, even though you know what you're doing, seasoned agents, okay, I feel like that sometimes, like, I know what I'm doing, I just have to stop and think about it. How about you just go down and use a checklist, just get into the pattern of doing that. It will free up your time. And if you schedule, if you carved out, that's why I say it's a daily thing, do the daily. If you carved out 15 minutes a day, just to go check your escrows, maybe 30 minutes, whatever it takes, 
boom, boom, boom. You have the peace of mind that I've done all the work. Maybe it's an hour. Maybe you need an hour in the morning or in the evening that you just go down and you handle everything right away. And so when you get down the list and it says, send this email, don't put that on some checklist. Go do it. If it can be done in a couple minutes, go knock it out. Which, by the way, is sitting here in number five, but actually is lead follow-up as well. So there you are, are making sure that you have a client for life, right? Communicating with your client is one of the most important things you can do because they're going to turn into referral business. So there you exactly. are. Right? Yeah. So it's it becomes that thing. I've noticed I'll be like, we'll have our meeting, Cosmo and I, and I'll be like, uh, we just did it the other day. Let's go down our escrow list. Uh, and he'll, he'll go take care. I said, you go do that and I'll go do this. And so we just knock it all out. And then you, then you feel like you can relax a little bit because part of what happens when you have a lot of unopened loops, meaning you know that you've got things to do and you've told yourself, I got to remember to go, go return this phone call, send that email. You have these open loops. And what happens is you, your subconscious mind, you're thinking about it is trying to remind you to do it. And so you'll wake up in the middle of the night. Oh, I haven't taken care of this. Or this is all the principles in the book, good getting things done by David Allen. I absolutely love that book. And that's what he talks about. The, I think the subtitle is the art of stress-free productivity, getting things done. David Allen, highly recommend that book or listen to it like on audible, his whole concept. And I think of this all the time is, you need to get everything out of your head into a trusted system or containers, he calls it in the book. And here's the beautiful part about why I like this guy's book. It's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of time management people that have written books to say, here is the exact system that I use that you need to use. And you know what the problem is? The system that you use, I may not like it. Yeah. Meaning like you have to have these color coordinated, uh, you know, you remember all that, right? Like, like get five different color uh, files and, and then this is what you're going to do with it. And like, that's great if it appeals and resonates with somebody. But what David Allen says is you got to figure out what is the container that you trust, meaning something you're going to use every day that, you know, if you take it out of your mind and you go put it into an app, a, I'm thinking of David Squire right now, his rolling 20 that he uses that he looks at every day. It's got to be something that, you know, it's there so that you can relax in your mind and say, I'm not going to let that slide because I have a trusted system I use every day to get tasks done or projects done, right? So figure out what that is for you. There's so many things, you know, and I haven't perfected it because I like tech and apps, but I find I don't want to go into an app to get to a checklist. So yeah. a lot of times I will, I will use the systems that we have, but I'll pull out and on just a piece of paper for my day, what are the things I'm going to accomplish just today? And knock them out in that hour of admin and follow-up time and, and so on. Or carry it with me to know that I need to go ahead and make these calls and get this done. If I if my time's up and I have to go on an appointment, I still have my list. Because when you have downtime, your client's 50, 30 minutes late for your appointment. Sure. You could go to your little list and say, oh, I could knock out that phone call and handle that. That's part of what you could do to be flexible with your time management. So... Honestly, that's really all there is to four and five. Active clients are pretty straightforward. <clears throat> you're getting ready for them. You're going and doing your thing. And you, you would love to be able to do that every day. And um, I hope that happens for you. And if it does, then you need to hire somebody to leverage the other things so you do not uh, fall behind and you provide excellent service. And then ad admin and escrow, <clears throat> just don't make it happen. Be efficient with it using checklists and systems and something that's going to work for you. But don't spend all your time in admin and escrow because you will find yourself not having escrows. Yeah, exactly. It's good stuff, Jan O'Brien. And I think, you know, the, 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 the great thing about the whole do the daily thing is it's not difficult, right? It's really basic, very easy stuff to do. But the whole point is to focus on those tasks and do them in the order that we're talking about. Because it is so easy just to jump to some, like, it's so easy to jump to number five because it's a place that you feel like you're working the most. Exactly. Really. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's like you've worked all day on, you know, <coughs> social media. I can relate to this doing this last night. As a matter of fact, just working on something like oh, you've all, three hours are gone. It's like, God, I worked so hard today. Yeah. Really? Did you? That, you did. just nailed. You nailed what I think happens to so many of us. And I can yeah. just think of lots of times that that's where I've spent my time where, wow, I put 60 hours in this week. Yeah. And I got all these things accomplished. I worked on my database. I did this. And then I look back and I go, well, I didn't even talk to anybody and I don't have any business. Exactly. So it's important. You got to find the balance. And so it is what Matt just said is so powerful. It's a simple five-step formula for success. 
simple doesn't mean it's easy to execute, however. Right. So the thing you have to get into is it's easy, it's simple, it's not necessarily easy. I'm going to say it's a simple formula. You need to be flexible because your week is not always exactly the same every day. And that's for the people that like to have a very rigid schedule. Real estate has probably been very vexing for you yeah. because yeah. you don't have a from seven to eight. I do this and you could set a perfect week trying to get everything. To, and the idea of the perfect week, like David Squire talks about, is putting these things we just talked about into your schedule somewhere. So you, you can't be rigid to say, oh, I can only do follow up from here to here, but that might be the only time your client can go look at a house. Right. So the point is you be flexible and you make sure, you know, number one is happening. Do it early. Or if you're an evening person, get the morning, you make it to call, make it your evening routine. If that works for you, yeah. the whole point is you're doing something for you physically, mentally, spiritually. So you are taking care of you. That's just as a non-negotiable, I think. You've just got to go figure that out for yourself. The others are business-related. So two through five are business-related. Just fit them into your schedule based on what's happening today. So you, a week may look like I had a couple clients this week, and then when I didn't have the clients, I spent a lot of time on admin and follow-up and caught up on my lead gen, and then you had a balanced week. That's perfectly fine, right? It doesn't have to be exactly the same amount of time spent every single day on five of those things. That's right. Right. And we're just saying five days a week because you do need to take some time off. Please do. Uh, you know, you don't need to work seven days a week, even though that's the reality. But when you know you're working on a weekend, you can find time here and there to, to get out and maybe go enjoy nature and do something for yourself. So you're not working, you know, 70 hours a week. Yep. You need to decompress for sure. You can find all these, uh, all the information about all of three parts of this over on our show notes at WBNOPodcast.com was episode 283, 284, and now, no, 283, 285, and 286. Uh, there'll be a lot of links to other podcasts we've done, other videos that we've, uh, we've done, um, just other, all the information we've talked about that will kind of, I'll kind of do a little wrap up here in uh, this episode of the show notes to have all those links right here in one place for you, but good information. And once again, you know, you, you're, you're going to find a big difference if you don't do if you don't practice your business like this you will see a diff a change in your uh in your the the way your your business starts to be more consistent and levels off if you start practicing the things the three the five steps of the daily so go check that out speaking of getting out and getting up and uh doing things um we have been really focusing a lot a lot more lately on more of the mindful side of not only real estate business but just everybody's life, right? Just your life in general. And have been doing a little more on social media with uh, with kind of mindful uh, things. Jan, Jan beat me to the punch. We both started, said we were going to start doing some some shorts uh, on TikTok and, well, real, what is it on TikTok? Just TikTok. Just, just TikToks, yeah. <laughs> and reels and shorts and, and things a little bit more on the mindful side while we're out and about and, and doing things. Jan did one of yesterday. We actually had talked about the daily, as a matter of fact. So mm -hmm. uh, I was doing the daily while I was talking about it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So make sure you go over and find us on our social media channels. I'll, I'll put all those in the show notes as well, though, though, too. So if you're not following us on TikTok or YouTube or Instagram or even Facebook. Yeah, um, it goes to the Facebook, uh, whatever they're called, Reels yeah, or whatever. I know exactly. It's really <laughs> um, go check all that out. So uh, we're we're uh, and, and we're in the process of beefing up our Line Connect Prosper course too, which hopefully we'll have out in summer. So yes, good stuff there. What else, Jan right. Brian? You know, uh, my wife left this morning. Here we are. The what? fourth no probably second week of spring um it's raining here she had on a scarf a coat a hood and looked out like she was walking nanook of the north was walking out to go to school today what the hell wow i know it's freezing it's 44 degrees this is very unusual but i'm not complaining because i'd rather have it be 44 than 144 all right everybody and uh if you're anywhere in the part of the america where the solar eclipse is going to be happening we'd love to hear how that goes for you <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> That's on Monday. We're going to be able to see here in Vegas, uh, I guess, half of the coverage. I mean, like it's supposed to be half, half and half. I don't know about where it, where it is there for you. But you I, I did order about? my solar eclipse glasses and they came yesterday. <laughs> glasses, did they look like? Um, they like they look old, like the ones you get in the theater. Uh, huh? No, they look like the ones you get in the theater. They're just, okay. they're just a, uh, you know. I wanted him to come and just be like the recycled ones from the 50s that had a green on one side and red on the other side and he got little 3D glasses. <laughs>
I don't know. I don't know if it, it said it was official, so I don't know. It didn't cost that much, so I don't know. Whatever. I'm going to give them away. It was a little pack of them. That's cool. <laughs> It'll be fun to see. It'll be fun to see, see images of that, even for us that live in non uh, solar. Well, I think I told you it's like the ones I got said that you could cut out the thing and put, cut out one of the filters that's in the eyeglass area and put it over your oh, well, your phone cool. so that you could like take a try to take a photo of it so it would maybe oh. come out better. So it's all about being able to see it, right? You know, right. Don't you remember when you were little? We looked at eclipses and sure. you could see them through that whatever you did in school or whatever. Well, so I no, think it, didn't you get like a, a piece of carbon or something, something you poked right? a hole in it? Yeah, I remember doing that. And you let it reflect through the hole onto the... That's it. Yeah. Remember that? See? We're having yeah, some good that. memories. So anyway, it's uh, been a while since it went through America. Like, a, you know, a lot of times it's out over the ocean or whatever. And so it's uh, it's interesting. So we'll see what happens. And it's probably, they're saying there's a lot of people going to these little places. Kind of comes from Texas, goes all the way up through Maine. Right. Uh, the little arc of totality or whatever they call it. I'm not going to be anywhere near there, but whatever. I'm going to go have some fun and see if I can get a picture of it. I'll let you know. Live back. The rest of the world. There'll be plenty of... Uh, Report back next week, everybody. <laughs> exactly. All right. All right, everyone. Get up, get out, have a great week, and be forever wandering, but not lost. So they, they look, do they just look like 3D glasses? Do they look like the old, old, styly, old fashioned 3D glasses? Oh, Jan O'Brien froze. All right, well, we'll we'll go ahead and wrap up now since Jan O'Brien is frozen on this screen. So anyway, everyone, get up, get out, live the life you have dreamed, and oh, she's back. Are you back? That froze? Yeah, I know that was weird. Well, get, let's do the outro. Yeah, we yeah. Can cut all that out. Uh, so anyway, I to show you because not only can you have it check grammar and do all that stuff, it's it's just the flow of it all. So I'm ex I'm, I'm um, I'll just let me make a note that I send that to you. I'm just about like getting all the knowledge that I can get. Who do you see when you look in the mirror? Look at our look at our costumes. <laughs> Wonder twins. <laughs> 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 That is freaking <laughs> awesome! Oh my god! Anyway, that matches the article. If you can, just to give you a little bit of a <laughs> a taste. But it... all right, I want to. You send me that. So I was dicking around with all that last night, and then post our YouTube video till nine o'clock. So see what happens. You go down the rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that is so funny. So you said compost. So let me tell you something that's so funny. Just a quick relative. <laughs>